doing it? Try it again. That silly face you had on just now. Sorry, it's fine. Sammy and Mano's great. Mone, Mone, Mone Lisa. <laughs> oh, you know what, Matt, can I make another request? Because we did see shots of, of the Barcelona fans leaving very early on in this game. Uh, leaving oh. at half time, actually. Oh. Oh. Thierry, how stinging will the criticism be come tomorrow morning in Barcelona? Look, I, I said it before the game, it was about pride, it was about momentum, it was about showing that you can win a big game, and Bayern Munich did that. This um, is half time, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, when you don't win there, it's tough. It's really tough. If they had won, like I said, they would have said, well, it's a bit too late. But now it's going to be a big problem because questions are going to be raised. The, the, it's the question about the manager, basically. Yeah, it will be. It will be. It it's will be. Not, not only him. Yeah, they will question a bit of everything. And you, you're the captain of the board, so obviously you're going to have more questions to answer. But is this a big problem where pl people like Xavi, who's had no experience before, goes into that job? Pirlo, the same. We've just seen Steven Gerrard lose his job. A t a t a players of that ilk and of that stature getting big jobs too early, it not going well, and then we're, not, we're losing them to the game. Well, it's second in the league. Uh, and we, You're talking we, about him losing his job? Yeah, no, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't talk about him losing his job. I never did. He's second in the league. Pep starting to coach with us with men. So don't don't compare Pep, what Pep did, for example, and what Xavi did. Pep. No, no, I know, but this, that's, that's what happened. The guy that started, great player at the club, at this club, the Pep did the same thing. That's why, that's why we're saying this. Um, I personally don't think he should lose his job. I think he's doing a great job. I think also Steven Gerrard didn't give, they didn't give Stevie G enough time. I think for me, that's, that was just ridiculous for me. Um, and you, don't, you need to give whoever ex, not ex players, people time. And I will again mention Arteta. It was nowhere to be seen, one of the worst season I've seen in Arsenal. You gave him time, he can build the team. All right, listen, let me take you out to, to the Camp Nou, to Barcelona, where Guillaume Balaguer is standing by for us and, and watch this game live in person. Let's get your thoughts on what reaction is going to be and what fallout is going to be at Barcelona, Guillaume. The season started with, wow, Lewandowski and Koundé and Chavis running all these guys and Pedri's in it great and Gabi, and now he's gone to, like, it's not enough to win. There's too many young players. Lewandowski don't get the service, Kunde cannot do everything on his own, they're exposed defensively, they're exposed offensively or they're not good enough offensively. Ah, this is not our level. And of course the realisation would be resignation first of all, it would be criticisms as he has been in the last few weeks, but Chavi is there to stay, because I think everybody realises now, it doesn't matter that you have Lewandowski and all those guys, and the expectations which have been far too big, the reality is second consecutive season in the Europa League. That's the reality. Guillaume, thank you very much. Uh, good to see you. As always, we... Yeah, well, it, it definitely it scares them because obviously financially it, it, it kind of it weighs heavy on them and they, and, they, and they lose out. And that's a reason for them. They don't want that, that jeopardy at all. They want that guarantee of, of certain financial um, muscle that they're going to have by staying in the competition all the time. No relegations, no... Um, going out and going into a different tournament or going out completely. So this is where it's at. But again, I agree with that. Karma, it always plays a part at mm. some point and it seems like it's taken, taken that this time. And it's a huge problem for Barcelona, I think. You know, obviously to, they've um, you know, leveraged money against the TV rights or um, to, to buy big players this, this year and they wouldn't have expected to go out of the Champions League um, before the knockout stages. So... It could be a huge blow for them financially. Yeah, I mean, Colin says Barca going out of the Champions League is a potentially catastrophic financial blow. Um, and Fentu goes one further and says, reports claim Barcelona is budgeted to reach at least the quarterfinals of the Champions League. It would be a financial disaster if they failed to make it out of the group stages and could affect how much they're able to spend. It sounds like a lead situation, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, you, you, you gamble on qualifying for the Champions League, they gamble on getting to a certain stage in the Champions League and the house comes crumbling down. And you think Barcelona, wow, like from the heights that they've, mm. they've been at to having to come to something like that would be crazy. It was amazing how they managed to, to do the transfers they did, really. Mm. Like we couldn't understand with the situation we were, we were told was so perilous. And all of a sudden you, you think they're signing Lewandowski, you know, top players and you think, mm. for big money. You wonder how it's happened. And then obviously going out of the Champions League can be a huge blow to that. It's like almost like the rules have been bent a little bit to allow them to... One, get the players in, but then to leverage certain aspects of the business going forward. It's, it's, it's not uncommon, crazy. you know. 
It's right. not uncommon, no. I mean, a number of clubs are doing it, including smaller clubs in, in lesser leagues than the Champions League and lesser clubs than Barcelona. Or in England? Yeah, some of them are doing Who? it, yeah. I, I read a report that there Norwich might have done it. Is it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, because you're trying to compete, and that's the problem, you know. But then it becomes massively unhealthy, unhealthy for football. Barca need to back Xavi. You can see the progress. Sacking him would just put us back two or three years, says Zach Jammer 8. It's almost like, can you judge Xavi, given all of the off-field problems that are going on as well? Yeah. I mean, can you judge him as a coach in this era of... of, of his management period at Barcelona because of the pressures around that surrounded him off of the pitch. It's crazy because obviously he came, he's got, again, we've got midfielders in our, in our country, Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard, who are, one's out of a job now, the other's still at Everton. This, this guy Xavi's now under pressure as well. It's crazy. Great midfielders of his generation who you expect to be great managers uh, going through tough times. Hector, um, how, how difficult was today's match also before the match when you knew it's, you, you won't make it in the knockout stage? Um, was it difficult to go into the match even? Uh, yeah, definitely. Obviously, it's, it's difficult uh, knowing that you're not playing for, for anything. This is something that we knew that uh, could happen, but it's no excuse for, for, for the result that we got in the game. You know, we're Barcelona, we're playing at home, so uh, we should offer more than what we did. And uh, that's got to uh, push us to, to improve week by week and, and focus on the competitions that we're on. How hard was the match itself? Bayern was uh, very strong. Your team was offensively um, not really good. Um, how did you see the match itself? Well, f football is difficult sometimes, you know. There, there, there's times that um, football doesn't flow in your boots in the in the same way that other games does. They they press really well. We tried uh, our best, but uh, the players with a lot of quality, and uh, we need to we need to be able to match and, and be superior the, to teams like like Bayern, you know. So that shows there's a lot of room for improvement, and and that's stuff that is uh, up to us. Now it's uh, going on in the Europa League. Um, is it a big motivation for you, or are you still disappointed that it's not well, enough for Champions League? Every every single game we play, there has to be motivation. We're football players. This is our job. So every single time that we step onto the pitch, we need to give 100% of whatever the competition is. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Standard answers, I would suggest. I would think standard. <laughs> Just Three yes. very standard well rehearsed answers. Very, very well rehearsed. Uh, let's have a look at Liverpool. The earlier games, they knew that they had to then wait and see what happened in that Atletico game. Atletico getting a result that meant that Porto do go through. So they are the other team through Time from that group police. B. What it actually well, means, by the way, with Atletico going out, we know that Barcelona also went out. Only one La Liga team through to the round of 16 for the first time since 1998. Here's how this game played Half out between up. Barcelona and Bayern Munich. But with Sadio Mane, I mean, this talk obviously has gone there. He's, he's won the Champions League before with Liverpool, but it's it's, it's a signing to try and win you the Champions League. It's not a signing for the future. We know the, the age of Sadio Mane, and he's in his real peak years right now. And then Super Moulton, he's a player. Every time he does something for Bayern Munich, we question actually why he's at the club, and you know, a, a club of some stature. But he's a really good squad player, and he always seems to do the business. Matt, can I see the pass of Nabri, please? Who's Matt? The producer. <laughs> Anyone know who Matt is? <laughs> Matt? The, the guy that gives you all the info when you don't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> no, not that one. Please, that's easy. The first one, come on. Come on. Come on. We're oh, talking man, about nice. money. We're talking about, we're talking about goals. Without assists, there's no goals. Give him his credit. The assist of, of, of Nabri there is magnificent. You Are want we able to see to the see first it? goal. Who, who is this Matt fella, by the way? I don't know. You don't know Matt? No. Oh, oh the fella that goes in your box. Oh, wow. Well, okay. At Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. Oh, that Matt. That Come on, Matt. <laughs> the one that tells you what, what you need to know. Look. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's football. <laughs> Jamie, well, I know I'm jumping back a little bit to Liverpool. How how big a loss for Liverpool is this fella here? Yeah, he's a big loss, of course, he is, but you know, people sort of question Liverpool for letting him go. They, they had no real option. They had he wanted to leave, he asked to leave the club sort of twelve months before he, he, he went. And they were never going to give two 30 year olds big contracts so him and Salah are in the same situation contract wise so I think the fact Sadio Mane wanted to leave they could bring a younger player in in terms of Nunes different type of player but sooner or later Liverpool had to drop the age or the average age of that front three with Firmino, Salah and Mane. You think he, he gets enough, enough credits for how Liverpool's played in the last couple of years? Signing. He, he 
he definitely gets oh, it from me. Money. Money. He definitely gets it from me. He's all I've always said consistently on this show that he, he's my favourite Liverpool player of that era of Jurgen Klopp. I think he completely changed the face of the club because he was Jurgen Klopp's first. But what are you laughing at? <laughs> What's going on here? Why do you always give me the blame? Yo, I, I, I said 